So I just finally got to bear witness to Batman 22, the movie that I've been hyped for since late 2019. The first movie that I've ever got to experience hearing all the different news about it for a solid year straight before cutting myself off so that I don't possibly ruin my experience. The movie that I've been singing its praise for two years and told that I'm too hyped for or disregarded. But here we are, motherfuckers, and Batman 22 is so goddamn amazing! This is probably going to be a very short and pretty vague quickie because I do eventually plan on reviewing the movie after it hits HBO Max because then I'll be able to rewatch the movie and take notes, which means I gotta wait a month and a half for that. But I'd be stupid to not talk about this movie now, especially how I've been hyping this thing up and saying that it'll be one of the best Batman movies after the first trailer dropped on DC Fam Dome 2021. And if you want to hear me talk more about Batman, I have a five-hour video on my channel of me going through and reviewing every single Batman movie that came out pre The Long Halloween Part 1, which includes all the live-action movies and the animated films. I put a lot of time and work into that video. It would be really very well appreciated if you checked it out. So anyways... Uh, this movie was a fucking trick. Like, holy shit. I've never experienced a movie that made me smile so much. I was so happy and giddy for so many parts about this movie. Especially the entire first act that my face genuinely started twitching from pain. Every actor, and I mean every actor in this movie, is fucking incredible. Robert Pattinson's Batman is amazing as I expected. I would damn well claim that this man is the best live-action Batman, and I'll even go further and say that he is currently my second favorite Batman right underneath Kevin Conroy. Zoe Kravitz, again, I'm gonna put her as best live-action Catwoman, and, like, third favorite Catwoman underneath Elizabeth Gillis, who's underneath Grey Delisle. But, like, goddamn, does Zoe nail the character of Selena Kyle? The way she's able to switch between strong, independent woman to a master at submissive seduction without missing a beat is so impressive. And her and Robert is so fucking good, both together, but also in their combat. Like, oh my god, the action scene in this movie is just... Ah! So fucking amazing! God, this entire movie just feels like an Arkham game. The choreography is amazing, the writing is amazing, the technology is great, and the world of Gotham is just so fucking good. Also, side note, hearing the words Iceberg Lounge in a live-action Batman movie made me so happy. I digress. Uh, Paul Dano was also excellent as the Riddler. He had so many points in this movie that just completely unnerved me. It felt like the movie just went, Movies that should bang! The Dark Knight and Saw. Colin Farrell is an absolute delight. He is such a perfect comic relief in a Batman movie while simultaneously challenging his inner Nolan North, and it was so amazing to finally get a live-action Penguin that is actually incredibly faithful and feels like the character. I can't say and doesn't look like a monstrosity because Gotham technically already did that, but then again, who the fuck watched Gotham compared to the amount of people who've seen Batman Returns in this movie? But... Without a doubt, the best actor and character in this movie is Jeffrey Wright as Jimbo Slice Gordon. I know we all love Gary Oldman's portrayal, including ya boy, and I still love it. I still think he looks and acts amazing as a commissioner. But holy fucking shit, is Jeffrey Gordon both played exceptionally, but the writing of this character, he is such a fucking beast in some of these scenes. Like, my man going toe-to-toe -to, -toe to fucking Batman. The story is very interesting and a very new take on the character of Batman. I already knew that we weren't going to show the Wayne's death, but I wasn't aware that Matt was going to tell us the tale that takes a completely different route. It's so interesting how they tell the Wayne's death, even if it means that we get a pretty basic plot point for the second act of the movie. I also really dig it, though, especially at the end where the movie tackles an anti-revenge look at the infamous I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am. Batman. Leading to a pretty neat character study at this Bruce Wayne and Batman. Which also reminds me of something that's in spoiler territory, but it's absolutely great. I just love hearing someone in a Batman movie talking about the truth of the characters Bruce Wayne and Batman. They also do a pretty good, and again, different, take on Selina Kyle's backstory that I'm a bit iffy on. On one hand, it's a little basic and leads to some also pretty basic storytelling plots, both movie-wise and Batman-wise, but on the other hand, I can appreciate Matt's wanting to tackle the character, live-action at least, in a different light. The cinematography is great in here as well. There are so many shots that caught my attention and pulled me into the movie, which is saying something, because I'm not really the kind to care all that much about cinematography, and without a doubt, the peak of it, in my opinion, is when the camera's attached to the side of a vehicle. There's just something about that that gets me so fucking hyped. And the chase scene between Batman and the Penguin was just 
fucking amazing, which leads me into the comedy of the movie. Yes, there is comedy, and yes, it's done great. I'm very strict when it comes to comedy in Batman movies, because it's been shown time and time again when it can be done terribly, but in here, there wasn't a single joke that didn't land for me. So, uh... That's about everything that I can think of currently. Again, I plan on doing a fully, very in-depth review of the movie when it hits HBO Max. Obviously, things can and most likely will change. There's parts of this movie that I was pretty iffy on or even took me out of the movie, but now that I think about it, I can grow an appreciation for it, so I'm very excited for the rewatch. Currently... I would say that this is my second favorite Batman movie, right under Mask of the Phantasm. I did not expect this movie to top it, but I did expect it to top The Dark Knight, which it did, and then it ended up topping Under the Red Hood for me as well. Uh, I would also say that this is in my now top seven favorite movies of all time, with a current score of 9 out of 10, though the entire first act made me think that this would be a 10 out of 10. So, yeah, I loved the movie as expected, it's great. It's amazing. I cannot wait to rewatch it and talk about it even further and in depth. And once again, if you want to hear me talk more about Batman, I have that five hour video. There's also timestamps, so you can just skip around to any movie that you want to hear my thoughts on. So that's pretty neat. Please go watch it. Please, I am begging you. <laughs> and of course, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already.